Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Supermodel. This is the penultimate uh, event in our Cahoots summertime slate, and we are so very glad to have you here with us tonight. It really means the world. My name is Tanisha Tate, and I am the Artistic Director of Cahoots Theatre. Cahoots Theatre was created almost 35 years ago as the first theatre company in Canada exclusively devoted to presenting racially and culturally diverse work. And over the course of that 35 years, our mandate has expanded to include all marginalized artists. And I am incredibly proud during a time in which discussions of marginalization are at the forefront and so important to be leading this very unique, very special company. This project is something that if you saw the trailer, you know that I've been thinking about for a very long time, since I was a kid, actually. And so to be able to bring this to you tonight with the help of so many wonderful people is deeply moving for me, and it means a lot. Thank you to every single artist who to to, to took part. Thank you to our incredible producers, our video editor, our dramaturg, I can't thank you enough. And to, to the gift of storytelling, I know that it's been difficult in these last 18 months to sometimes figure out how to do it in a way that's going to land and resonate like the way that we are used to. But I truly feel that this project is a triumph of storytelling and I'm so very proud of it and of Cahoots tonight. I would now like to pass things on to my wonderful, wonderful partner in crime and art, the managing producer of Cahoots Theatre, Lisa Alves. I have to unmute myself. After all this time, I forgot. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Lisa Alves, managing producer at Cahoots Theatre. As Tanisha said, we thank you all for being here tonight. Hopefully you have seen at least nine of the supermodel videos on YouTube, which has led you here to the panel. And we encourage you to go back and watch the other videos that weren't in your initial path you took because all of them are brilliant and poignant and magnificent. Um, supermodel has will be up for one year on YouTube. So you have so much time to go back and rewatch. Now, before I talk about the project and how the panel will work tonight, I wanna go over some access notes first. So please, for all my audience members, please keep your microphones and videos off for the panel. We are recording and we're spotlighting. So you're not necessarily going to be recorded, but just for confidentiality's sake, it's always good to practice. Um, we will have a portion of tonight where attendees can ask the team questions, where we'll welcome, we'll welcome folks who feel comfortable to turn on their cameras and mics to do so, to ask questions. But for the first part of the panel, just keep your microphones and cameras off. Second, unfortunately, we do not have ASL interpretation for this event. We do have a live English captioner tonight provided by the captioning group, and we understand that live English captions are not a full substitution for ASL interpretation as they are two different languages. We look forward to continuing wearing, working with our deaf community to successfully integrate ASL into future CAHOOTS events. For the live captions, uh, if you're here on Zoom live, to enable them, you can click the CC icon at the bottom of your toolbar. Um, Hello, if you're I'm on calling computer. on behalf of Dan Wise, your federal conservative candidate for your writing. Hi. Um, yeah, this is not the time for that. Thank Thanks you. Have a good time and have a good day. Bye bye. <laughs> that was an interesting Zoom bomb. <laughs> we got Zoom bombed by a conservative uh, member of parliament. Okay. I'm going to continue on with my access notes. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, yes, for the live captions, you can enable them by clicking the CC icon at the bottom of your toolbar if you're on your computer. Um, if you're on an iPad or another device, it might be at the top right. 
you can email, email me or message me if you need to enable those. If you're watching the recording on YouTube, uh, the captions are also available. So please click the CC icon at the bottom right of your YouTube video window. All right, the panel. So Hello, I'm calling <laughs> on behalf of Wow, we're getting it again. <laughs> no, please stop doing that. Thank you. All right. Uh, so most importantly for the panel, we will have four sections and the sections will last 30 minutes long. The first three parts will have six to seven artists who will talk with Wallace and discuss, you know, certain topics pertaining to the project, such as the creation and what's next after Supermodel. Um, these three parts, again, will be 30 minutes long and will end around 940 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the last part will be where audiences ask can ask questions. Um, and I will come back on screen at that time to reiterate how the portion will work. So if you do have a burning question for our artists, I'll let you know how to ask that. Our night oh, will end at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And with that, I pass the floor off to Wallace Caldoza, our fantastic dramaturge, facilitator, and director extraordinaire. I, sorry, I missed that cue. My 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 ass was trying to remove Cheryl. Lord, no, thank you. Um, <laughs> what a treat, theater, eh? Okay, uh, hello and um, good night, everyone. I'm 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 Wallace, and I've been assisting with some of the dramaturgical work of Supermodel. I just want to say, first of all, like my little heart is mustering up with the greatest thanks ever to you know towards the Supermodel team, um, Lisa Tanisha Sam. Thank you for convening us. The artists, again, to reiterate what Tanisha said earlier, thank you for saying yes and saying yes with the generosity that surpasses this project. Um, I do want to name shout out Nassim to our, our video editor whose image is the first that comes to mind whenever I think of editing now. Um, and thank you to Karthi Chin for actually reinforming the structure of Supermodel from the get, we, we owe you that. Um, and thank you to those of you who have joined us and I've moved through this piece with us this evening. I really I value the care and I just wanna take a moment to kind of push that care a little further um, into an introduction into these panels. It's, it's gonna be messy and it might take a hot minute because it, it has to. Um, so this introduction comes from Tanisha, Lisa, Sam and I talking about how to acknowledge land and acknowledge the land in relation to this project. Um, for those of you who aren't super familiar, land acknowledgement has really become like a thing in theaters over the past few years, and it's rightfully come under critique. Uh, Supermodel has been created at, from, and with various places, spaces, and people, not only across Turtle Island, but in other places of the world, by a cohort of artists with incredibly diverse and, and specific relationships to lands, peoples, and stories that they hold close. So Supermodel brings forth stories of immigration and diaspora, the further get entangled in notions of race, ethnicity, class, gender, politics, sexuality, ability, size, age, citizenship, and other intersections of identity. And that gets further complicated because this piece also exists in digital space, which has been created by human interference detrimentally to the planet. Um, and yet supermodel, supermodel exists here in this space. So I'm really holding fast to the generosity um, of, of Supermodel and its, its team with contending with responsibility and reckoning in order to assist with the messiness of land acknowledgements and other kind of contemporary liberal acts of recognition, which as a yellowized Dene scholar, uh, Glenn Sean Coulthard writes, promised to reproduce the very configurations of colonialist racist patriarchal state power that indigenous people's demands for recognition have historically sought to transcend. I just think these acknowledgements have been made with a common with this notion of commonplaceness and uh, with a common format, which is again, not to negate the origins of these actions in the TRC. This is a critique of their evolution as they've been kind of co-opted into places like Instagram, where there's this onslaught of repetitive pastel hued, I mean, the colors change all the time, um, but these infographics riddled with commodified buzzwords that are kind of sandwiched between stories showing, you know, what bougie brunch someone got that day in between a picture of, of this piece of manicured nature that uh, some of us can't afford to even go visit. And it's not, again, it's not that that story can't exist, mind you, it's just that it's got that same kind of feeling for me that, that hearing an acknowledgement at the beginning of a piece of, a, of theater, let's say, institutionalized theater happens and, and 
it seems to signal this thing that says we know this shit is fucked up but you know the show must go on and Superbottle reminds me to ask does it <laughs> can it go on um there's this really strange distancing thing that happens that gives a false sense of safety and a really specific sense of a very specific type of reality um and Tansha talks often about nuance in our discussions about kind of liberation and how theater plays a role in that and I think that reminds me to pay pay attention and, and take it as a warning because I'm thinking now you know in our gathering who are we right now and why and how do we acknowledge what we mean when we say by land I'm thinking of my grandmas you know one who I know my Trinidadian grandma who I love and my Filipino grandma I've never had the opportunity to meet um, or know or you know love the way I'd like to um, what do they mean by acknowledgement and I'm curious about why there's no commitment to adding additional questions on kind of the standard why here why now when we're talking about why we make the work we do you know could it not go why here why now and for whom why them and are they not also us and if this is the way things are can I or can we live with them and how will we live better do we want to live better like what will have to come next to feel good the theater industry academically and conceptually can and must do more than what it's doing currently. And it actually can take that criticism it's built into the ethos. And I have to say thank you again, Supermodel, um, for keeping me tethered to the series of questions and this kind of constant moving together um, across difference always towards living better. Um, it's kept me from spitting in this really, really awful stasis that happens when I, when I choose, when we choose to work and tell stories in the way that Supermodel has chosen to. Um, to borrow actually from Byron and Andrew's videos, the one and only Mayari, who I only send the coolest of dreams to forever and always. Um, Byron says, white supremacy doesn't want Asians to realize that our liberation is tied up with the liberation of other racialized people, because if we realize that, we would join them in dismantling white supremacy. So in the spirit of entangling us all, and tying us all up, I'll say the following. We must show up for our people being evicted from encampments. For those of us existing on the traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the New Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, these are areas covered by Treaty 13 of 1805. Um, we've seen the state violence against those that are been deemed uh, houseless, houseless at Trinity Bellwoods, Landport Stadium, among others, this time. And the decisions for police to enact violence against those who reside in these spaces and those who show up in coalition. And this violence will continue and we must show up in the ways that we are asked to show up in by those whose autonomy is at risk. We must show up for liberation movements with our people in Palestine, Afghanistan, Vietnam, Somalia, Chile, Haiti, and Hong Kong to name literally only a few countries that have been assaulted again and again by British, Canadian, American, and European imperialism. Um, we must show up for our people that are Tibet, absolutely. Thank you, shout them out, shout them out. We must show up uh, again and again for people that are bearing the brunt of climate crisis and do things like, you know, prevent the construction of line three that's happening between Alberta and Wisconsin right now, um, or is planning to be. We must continue to move towards indigenous land sovereignty and for the autonomy of indigenous peoples globally to be determined on their own terms. I mentioned Treaty 13 earlier, and right now there's direct attack on the fishing and treaty rights of the Sabaganagatik First Nation in Nova Scotia, which should be acknowledged as a violation. You know, the resistance of 1492 Land Back Lane is still ongoing. The resistance at Ferry Creek continues to escalate in its violence from the state, um, and uh, Indigenous children are still being searched for. Um, uh, we must continue to support our people who are at the mercy of various pandemics. Uh, whether that is COVID-19, which is still happening, or the insidious anti-Blackness that remains deeply entrenched, no matter how politely in this place we call Canada. Um, Dr. Roslyn Hampton reminds me, uh, my supervisor, to be wary of, for instance, these EDI initiatives that keep on appearing, saying, and I quote, I don't think we need any more anti-Black racism initiatives. The Canadian University is itself an anti-Black racism initiative. Any racism against Black people requires anti-anti-Black racism strategies. The political movement for Black life seeks to end institutionalized anti-Blackness and abolish the anti-Black racism task force that is the police, end quote. Giovanni Sai also picks this up um, in relation to the theater industry and his response if you'd like to go back and look at that. And then to my fellow East Asian and Southeast Asian people, let's just do more stuff together, whether it's supermodel or like cooking together, just chatting. You know, we are entangled, we're tied up and uh, I'd like to be 
you know, continue to be passionately, unexpectedly expected and vice versa with all of you in our efforts to live better. So that my gratitude. I welcome other acknowledgements. Please shout them out. Um, and now I would really, really love to, oh no, start our first panel since Athena it's going to be dipping in just a second. So if we can start our first panel, that would be amazing. Sorry, Athena. No, no. <laughs> Everything you're saying you should take the space. So. <laughs> generous y'all too generous all right we're gonna get this panel together if you don't mind with each panel i'll just say it now for um for everyone to know if you could introduce yourselves that would be fabulous you know fabulous for me how are we looking are we looking good yeah beautiful all right oh beauty all right please introduce yourselves beautiful folks please I'll do it. Athena, go at the start and then you pass <laughs> one. Uh, hi, I'm Athena Caitlin Trin. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for going on this journey with us. Uh, this has been such a special project in such a, I don't know, emergent time. It's been so special to see all of your videos and to share the space with you in whatever way we're sharing the space, I guess. Uh, thank you. I'll pass it on to Richard. No. <laughs> Hi, my name is uh, Richard Lee. I am a theater artist and also a former sound designer and um, experimental filmmaker, apparently now, whatever that may mean. Awesome. I'm going to own that. Um, pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for having me and uh, sharing this space with everyone. I'm going to pass it to uh, Alia. Is that how you say your name? Alia. Alia. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Alia Siniza Rasul. Um, I'm a Filipina comedian. Uh, writer, culture worker. Um, I'm also a member of the Tita Collective. And um, yeah, that's me. I'll pass it on to Kimmy. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me proper? Is it Kimmy? Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Kimmy Tr uh, Jung. I guess I should pronounce it the way it's pronounced finally. It's always like prong. Um, <laughs> I'm a Vietnamese Canadian actress, uh, panelist, instructor, uh, creator, artist in general. I'm very happy to be here. I'm honored to be here. I don't often get these opportunities, so I can't wait to meet all of you in person, hopefully someday. And I'll pass it on to Jeff. Thanks, Kimmy. Hi, everyone. I'm Hawk Ake, or Jeff Ho. Um, I just wanted to say hi to so many people in the audience and all my artist friends here and to artists I haven't met and to Wallace. I'm just really happy to be with everyone again, even uh, if it's on Zoom. So thank you for uh, gathering us in this way. Um, I just, I'm just overjoyed to see everybody, really. Um, William, hi. Thank you, Jeff. Um, my name is William Yong and I was born in Hong Kong. And uh, I am so thankful to be here with, with all these amazing artists. Like, it's just, it's a dream to be among you guys. Watching your films really inspire me. Um, I am a filmmaker, choreographer, a dancer, and actor. So um, I'm just like, I'm just so happy tonight that we get to get together and just, get to know more of you guys. So thank you so much. Beautiful. And they're also just cool people. So we're gonna launch in because Athena has to go and do some more, you know, she always stays on that hustle, respect. <laughs> but, you know, I wanted to kind of bring forward a question that Milton actually dropped in the chat when we were all chatting, which is kind of, and I'll pose it to all of you. So, cause I think it's a good opener. So feel free to jump in and how, however you'd like to approach it. But ask me Athena, what kind of stuff or what, la what did you latch on to, as Milton said, from the videos that, and the responses that you made through? Curious to know. Yeah, so I got to watch Jeff's response to Tanisha's seed. And it's so interesting because, I mean, Jeff and I have conversations like this a lot. Um, <laughs> and I pictured, I was messaging him before we actually started the panel, that I pictured that uh, my response was we were sitting together eating like pork bone soup and just having a conversation. Uh, I think I cry at least twice or three times every time I see Jeff because we delve into these deep, deep, deep things. Um, and it was so special because some with my response, it was a 
I, I received just file and I immediately turned on the camera and was like, okay, I'm just going to capture what comes out now. And so as I watched Jeff's video, I just jotted down those thoughts. And then as soon as the video ended, I launched into what you all saw. And so those emotions, just like all of that just felt so much like a real conversation and connection. And like on my screen, I can still see Jeff's image as at the end of it. So he's just paused on screen and it really felt like I was just sharing with him. So yes, I pulled some, some images that he mentioned and it is such a direct relation. Um, and I think the feeling of wanting to have soup with him is what made me make pho and like put it, put it, I, I was like, well, it has to be, it has to be there. It, it has to be on the screen. <laughs> and um, I think that's, that's where that was birthed from that, that need to share a meal. Cause it felt like, you know, this is what we, this is what we, boil soup to this is what we yeah yeah and I wonder Athena as you move through like going through the did you did you went through the path tonight or maybe earlier I can't remember but I was wondering you know is there anything in particular especially with a little bit of I guess hindsight we all have a bit of space from this now this our initial recording and the editing etc is there anything moving through from other videos or even now seeing your own video in hindsight that you're kind of you're still mulling over still holding Oh my God, um, William, William, your video was heartbreaking and God, it just, this whole journey, getting to William's video when I did my path was just like, you know, I felt so, I felt like it's so cathartic. And then with William's video, it kind of, the blood on your hands, it is so, demanding of action like I want to get up I want to be in that space with you oh it's, it's just I was talking to Crystal about this earlier but my god like William's video like I, we can see that you are a dancer a cinematographer we can see all of it. it it shines and then it just digs us to the core and it's beautiful um I think back and I, I wish I wish I had I wish I had some of Jeff's voice in my piece because uh, I'd, I'd love to hear like the echo of things that we mm -hmm. said back and forth. I think that would have been so beautiful. I love that way that Samantha had that and it made me go, oh my God, like if every one of us had that, that it would feel like such a connection, a conversation because that's how we, I think at least that's how I bounce ideas off of people. Maybe I would repeat what they say, you know, tangents and the way that we get to choose our own path through the, you know, the 50 different options or whatever the number was, sorry, mathematicians, um, whatever the way is, it's like, that's how conversations happen too, that we are just constantly changing paths and going and coming back. It's just, it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I think I would love to be able to like, if the path, you know, the two videos that it could give us to go back to the video that we were mm -hmm. just at. And like, mm -hmm. you know, like to just, keep bouncing mm. back and forth i think that'd be so yeah like cheating on your choose your own adventure right going back to the fine yeah exactly you know like i just want i i like, love that idea of being able to have like your own choice and then to bounce back i mean you could spend hours in this little universe mm. just just keep going and coming mm. back it's beautiful it really is i really is i'm wondering you know William, if you have any thoughts, but like, see if we can get some connection. William, do you have any thoughts in relation to that? Also, sorry to interrupt, Athena. If you have to bounce, feel free. Yes, I, I will be back for the audience questions then. So if, if anything comes up, I will I will be back. But thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. Uh, for holding space you. with us. I, I look forward to talking more. <laughs> You're making me cry. <laughs> thank you so oh. much. For coming. Uh, it's payback because you made me cry and I was like in my bed like ah. <laughs> so there you go honestly thank you all right I will be back well and with then William yeah same it's kind of same question your way I mean hearing that feedback from Athena yeah I was I, I don't know I, I mean I, I found this just really the whole thing is just like really quick because I, I was really inspired by the video by, you know, by 
Brian and Andrea and Courtney. And they are, you know, they really, you know, passing through in information, you know, you know, pass through different generations. And I was so, so touched like watching their videos. And then I was thinking, you know, when I first received my scholarship to move to London, I wish that I had, you know, my relatives to tell me what it was like to live in a foreign country as a visible minority. So I really didn't have anybody who, who told me, you know, what would happen. So I was really touched by those videos and I thought maybe I should make a video that maybe I can just like a, you know, talk to myself, you know, like a soliloquy and with, mm -hmm. because I'm a filmmaker and dancer, so I may be expressed through that medium. So I just grabbed my friend, <laughs> write something quickly and that video was made in one day. So it was really quick. It's right next to my where I live in Corktown Common. <laughs> so we just went down and um, I decided to do the red hand because I felt like, you know, the, the, the story is really a true story, 100%, right? So I still remember vividly how much blood I have. My, I still have the scar in my hand that I stopped the guy who tried to stab me. So. I decided to use the blood um, to sting my hand because that experience really stained my life for a long time. Mm -hmm. But the decision to cut it, you know, really sharply is because at some point I felt like, no, I should not let that happen. I should not be quiet. I should not be blaming myself, you know, when things happen like this, you know, especially at the 10 years I lived in UK, I studied in UK, so there are lots of this kind of experience happened to me. So, those are really like stylistic things. And I, I really am really thankful that some people respond to it um, uh, in a different way than words. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled to, to, to make a video really based on my, my personal experience. And it comes, it comes across, exactly. Thank you, Tanisha. Stunning is the only word I think I can use right now to describe it. I wonder a little bit too, like this particular grouping of, of artists for this panel, all of you have chosen a very kind of a particular form or aesthetic to approach these questions with. And whether that's talking, as William said, about kind of that soliloquy style of being like, wouldn't you, you need, would you like to hear what has happened or how you need to move or whatnot? Um, mm. Or whether that's kind of a different kind of approach. Richard, I'm thinking a little bit of, of that photo journal type thing, or even Alia talking with your family in that Zoom. I don't know if any of you would be up for kind of talking a little bit about what it means to choose a form or aesthetic to approach a question like this. If any of you, Richard, perhaps maybe. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I want to hear what you have to oh, say. Oh yeah, for sure, <laughs> give it. Um, I guess like mine's not, I don't know if mine was like an aesthetics choice more as like a mm. purely a reaction to Milton's because um, I got Milton's mm. amazing video. Like, so, <laughs> So my reaction to Milton's video is that, you know, I think as someone who who kind of like, you know, suffers <laughs> from being like, you know, part of this model of minority myth, um, there's a lot of anxiety when you get asked to do anything and when you're asked to perform. So Milton's video, if you've seen it, it was like, it's a spelling bee and there's like this, and like, I could feel like the anxiety and basically the path from like what I, I pulled from, from Milton's video, like that path was sort of like the path that I took honestly, when, when asked, what does model minority mean to you? Because, you know, I'm a first generation immigrant. Like I moved here when I was 19, my parents don't live here. Um, there's a lot of narratives around the model minority myth that I, I just don't relate to. Um, even the Asian identity is like new for me because, um, you know, I grew up in Dubai where I was Filipino and I lived a little bit in the Philippines where I was Filipino. And then I went to university here when suddenly there are like Asian clubs and I'm like, what does that mean? I'm like, I'm already struggling. <laughs> They're struggling with so many identities. Like, you know, I'm a Filipina, I'm Muslim, I'm queer, I'm an artist, I'm, you know. So I'm like, oh man, I'm Asian too. <laughs> so, so there's a part like the way Milton's video ends where it's like, it's kind of like phone a friend. And that really like touched me because like, I think 
that was the one thing that I could really, really, really connect and relate to. And it's sort of like, I think it's the most, like, for me and my Asian friends, and as I get, grow, get to learn about other folks' culture, it's like that collectivist, that kind of like home is, is, is a huge part of the core. And so I phoned my friends, which is my family. Um, <laughs> and the thing about this, like, so I don't know, it's, it's funny. Can I say that my medium of artistry is my family right now? Why not? Does, does that make Why sense? Not? Yeah. So, so, so the story is, so my, my piece is family Zoom. And um, my mom lives in Dubai. My dad lives in the Philippines. Um, I moved here 10 years ago. And prior to the pandemic, I had lost touch with them. We were very close growing up. And because I had to move countries and Skype really wasn't a huge thing and calling home was expensive, I lost family dinners. And so for 10 years, as I grew in my Canadian identity, I lost who I was growing up and looking back as a 30 year old now I'm like that is a, like a form of violence which is weird so I didn't know I lost it until I came until until the pandemic first week of the pandemic my mom's like listen we're going to zoom every day <laughs> I was like so it was like all right I mean the pandemic's only going to be like two weeks right <laughs> no so anyway 500 zooms later the one thing that I realized like by disconnecting with my family I disconnected with like such a big part of me which is a wild thing that I'm still grappling with there's like a whole part of me and I I grew up without a part of me which is wild and so that's why family zooms are really important and that's why I really gravitated to that um, I think like I really needed help to answer this question I had a lot of anxiety I was like you know, and the interesting thing about my family is my mom actually lived in the US. She was as a teenager and it was so racist there in the 60s that her family decided to move back. And my dad's a refugee, made a, made a refugee by his own people because we're Taoists and the Filipinos are our oppressors. So, so I wanted to ask them what model minority it was because they're, you know, like they're my home base. Mm -hmm. when I'm unsure and I feel like that's what I kind of pulled too from a lot of folks like I think Jeff was like I've canvassed my family and I think now that I'm back to my family zoom and back to the family dinners I realize like that's kind of the first thing I do when I'm like come when I when I stumble upon a like a, a an obstacle I canvass my family because you know out of everyone in the world they're the ones who share that same weird mix of identities that I am and so so yeah, so that's sort of like the choice. So like the family Zoom as a uh, as a um, replacement for the family dinner that I lost, and it's something that I think we're all we're on to right now. So you I, know, <laughs> good one. It'll it'll do until until the time. I yeah. appreciate, that. I appreciate yeah. that, Richard. Sorry, I think you were going to say something. No, no, that's all. I just wanted to add to that, and I think like the things that really stood out to me was the honesty in the first two videos that I received. Uh, and on, and I had no idea what I was going to talk about. I had no idea what I was going to say. Same fears that Alia had, like, just like, <laughs> everyone's going to judge me. Um, but I will say that my form came out of um, uh, watching Amanda's amazing mm -hmm. visual video and diary. And uh, again, the honesty of that was like, oh, there is no, there is no, I don't have to do a talking head theater piece number one, um, I can do it any way I want. And then like Jeff, if I may, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rat you out. Jeff submitted the 17 minute video, which I watched in its entirety. And I loved it. I loved every minute of it um, because it, uh, like I said, it's that honesty that gave me permission mm -hmm. to even start to kind of explore what I wanted to say. And five minutes is not enough to go deep, but um, you asked the question of form and that's where it came from. I, is very very moved by by both their pieces yeah no i to say at the very least i also want to pick up a little bit on something that was also kind of moving around in this panel and that's that idea of kind of family and and jeff kimmy both of you speak very 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 deeply about kind of that relevance i wonder if kimmy perhaps maybe you want to start us off kind of in that section yeah um but you might be a little quiet your audio Hi, 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 hi. Sorry. Is that better? Oh, she got the whole setup. That's a little bit better. 
Ja, ja. It doesn't have to come in the video. <laughs> okay, that's good. Hello, my name is Kimmy J. Um, uh, yeah, the form I took was, ju it just had to be what it was. I've realized in the last year, especially being someone that people have um, sort of, in a way, for lack of a better term, relied on um, in the industry I'm in. And, um, uh, you know, um, I found myself 2020 having to have these really, really tough conversations mm -hmm. face to face um, or um, in a lot of different sort of meetings. And with my cl like closest body of friends and colleagues where like I say in the video this like 2020 just r ripped this veil open mm -hmm. for everyone and it was the first time I wasn't as afraid to express what this model minority myth has done to our I say our um, people mm -hmm. and um, our community so I just knew that the clearest path for me to express this was just throw my phone up and talk. Mm -hmm. um, there's so, as a multidisciplinary artist, there's so many things, you know, I've gotten my, cause I, these videos were just unreal. Like I got Taya's and their video, I was like, <gasps> what this is incredible and I loved how artistic it was and I was like yeah let's do it but I was like for me in that moment it felt forced because their mm -hmm. video caused such an eruption of emotion for me I was like let's just put the phone up right now where I am in this room I was sitting on the floor watching it so I just put the phone in like a stand and I was like let's just go how did that make me feel um and I from learning to, uh, what has happened in 2020 i'm most effective when i'm speaking to people just heart to heart mm -hmm. and we don't get that opportunity as artists and especially asian artists within the model minority myth i call it like it's a place for us because even the opportunities we get uh, to be proudly asian or whatever it is not from our point of view it is never from my voice my vietnamese voice it is always curated with a white paintbrush so th it was liberating for me to get 2020 to speak to people and i thought okay we're a family of asian artists right now doing this project the only way i can yeah express this is to make a video and i thought I was like, ah, oh, I'm gonna run out of things to say, but so I, I was like, okay, it's it's good. okay, five minutes. Wow, that's a long time. Fifteen minutes, holy, that's a long time. My video ended up being <laughs> like forty minutes. I was like, what? When it ended, I was like, no, that's not right. And I, yeah, because I got so emotional from Taya's, like I have it here. It's still like I can't even look at it sometimes reading their poem because it strikes you so hard especially speaking I'm sure I could have like a day long conversation with each and every one of you and we would just and that's what it felt like to hear um, another artist that has experienced even though every journey has been absolutely different but just gets it we never get to talk to anyone that gets it <laughs> um my you know the closest thing was maybe when I did Miss Saigon but even then uh that was whitewashed as you all know <laughs> that show is a complete whitewash so um it was really like wow Taya f has felt what I felt and has like sc is screaming it now in this poem and mm -hmm. I can't help but mm -hmm. just express what it was. And editing was hard because there were so many times that I understand now why the video was so long because I cried through so much <laughs> of it. And there's so many sections I'm like, girl, get it together. But then, um, so I had to cut all that because I didn't want, I, it, this is so important. And to try and fit it in the time frame, I was like, this isn't about me, this is about us. What do we have to say together? Mm -hmm. um, I can give my tid, uh, like tidbit, but, we we know what this makes us feel so i don't need 
I don't need all that. Um, let's just try and get uh, my personal like view out as eloquently as possible. Um, so that was the form. And if we did this over and over again, I'm sure all of us uh, would do it. Because like sure. the, the cooking videos I saw, I was like, yeah, I would have done that. And like all of those cool, like edited, the dancing. I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. We still have time. We still have time. Don't yeah, worry. Let's, Don't so worry. When you, that's why I said yes. When you were like, let's keep doing stuff. I was like, please and forevermore. Let's Absolutely. just keep doing stuff like this because this is never done and we just like i say in the video the unedited version we're just gonna have to keep doing our own shit because no one else is gonna take our shit and um we're just gonna have to create and we're just gonna have to create ourselves and and bring ourselves more to the table like it puts a lot of um good pressure on us to keep representing in the right yeah. way and i've learned that like the hard way this year thank you kimmy that yeah. again like you just said Powerful. You speaking directly to us. I'm feeling it. I'm cognizant. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm cognizant of time. So Jeff, I do want to, I do want to open the floor to you and have a little bit of a peek into your brain, if that's all right. No, thank you. I loved so much hearing everybody talk. It's been so beautiful. And uh, I feel quite speechless actually, because uh, so much emotion and um, creativity and also like deep vulnerable thoughts have already been shared in the panel and also in the films. Um, I'm, I'm a touch speechless. I'm, I think this past year it? has held a lot of um, uh, uh, trying to understand space and pace um, and trying to process these vulnerabilities um, without rushing. Um, so, uh, I, yeah, I'm a touch speechless. Okay. I, we have forever and ever together again. So don't worry about it. We'll get to the words when we get them. Don't run. But thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Is there, I'm wondering, is there anything else lingering? Oh, I think we have a minute left. Any little lingering thoughts? No, that's fine. Again, we have forever. <laughs> doing my own shit. Okay, yes, well, we'll yes. continue on. Thank you, panel one, as always. See you in a sec. <laughs> I can't believe I just get to do this. That's pretty wild, eh? Hmm. Pretty wild. <laughs> Who are we chatting with next? I believe. Are you can't spotlight now? Let's see. Uh, bear with for just a second, folks, the old technical issues, as it were. Oh, maybe I can spotlight a bit. Oh, gosh. I don't know how to use them. Hi, everybody. Just give us a moment. We're trying to spotlight people. <laughs> All right. Allison and Courtney. Courtney's not here yet. Oh, I'm here. Um, am I am I in this one? I think so. <laughs> you are now. Here we go. Oh wait. Here we go. I've got I'm organized. I'm <laughs> It's not you. You don't have any control over Zoom. It's fine. All right, folks. Thank you so much. Panel two. I wonder if we can kind of go around and do a quick intro. I can of yourselves if that's all right before I ask you those little cues. Sam, do you want to go first? Sure. I'd love to. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Supermodel. I was so excited. I was a producer for Supermodel, and I'm also so blessed to be the very last artist in this honeycomb structure. Wallace actually was supposed to be the last one and never gave me the slot. <laughs> it was always for you. I am very happy and very excited to be chatting with everybody tonight. That's it. Next to maybe Diana, you're next to my screen. 
Oh, I think you're muted, Diana. I'm one of the tech dinosaurs. Um, thank you so much to Cahoots and everybody. It was such a joy. Um, it was cathartic just to hear and feel that we're all part of this giant circle, like a circle that just kind of keeps rippling and that there's a chance to ripple. And, you know, that we're all, we're all different raindrops, but um, we're just making this great ocean. And I felt so honored and so privileged to be part of it and to see everyone's creative soul, heart, um, express that each one of you in such diverse ways. It was such a joy. So thank you so much for that. Oh, did I say I was di <laughs> introduced Diana Cho? Uh, I'm I'm a, a playwright, an actor, a storyteller, an arts educator, and um, and uh, yeah, poet. And I th thank you so much. Love you guys all. <laughs> Love you. Thank you, Allison. I'm just going around my grid, if that's all right, Allison. Yeah, yeah. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah, you sound good. Hi, everyone. I'm Allison Wong, Wong Hao Man, and I'm a theater artist, a director, and a producer. Um, and wow, this has been a really powerful and kind of fulfilling experience to be able to be in conversation with so many amazing pieces of work. Um, so I really feel very full right now. <laughs> My heart feels very full. Um, and I'm really excited to, to be here with you all. Thanks, Allison. Happy to be here with you. Next, next, Taya. Hi, everyone. My name is Taya Kasahara. Nice to be here. Um, yeah, I can't stop smiling, but also just like a lot of feels. Um, I think it's going to take me a, like a while to process all the very powerful and unique stories and I'm so looking forward to like enjoy this you know for the course of a year and to revisit and you know to connect with these artists because a lot of them I've never met you before and I'm so excited to get to know you over you know the next while who knows and also to reconnect with the ones that I have worked with and, and you know so thank you so much for this opportunity I feel really humbled and also like I don't know. I feel like there's like a new family that's growing here. This is really exciting. So thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. Joanna, you're next on my screen. Thanks, Wallace. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you all. Um, my name is Joanna Yu, and uh, I am a set and costume designer, theater, film sometimes, TV things. Um, Taya, you took all my words, so I'll, I'll just say that I echo all of those things. And I'm so grateful uh, for the opportunity as well and for the conversations that have just started and, and where we're going to go with them going forward. So thank you. Happy Love to be that. here. Love that energy. Courtney, what's up? Hi. Hi, Wallace. Hi. Uh, I'm Courtney Tung Lancaster. I'm a theatery type. Um, and I just wanted to say thank you for like a creative provocation with really narrow restraints because that's the ideal actually is like you're going to deliver a five minute video that you're going to produce in three days with what you know on one theme and uh, that is so freeing actually to be given those kinds of constraints and that was um, it was a, a real gift in the midst of a bit of a creative wasteland for me so I'm, I'm very glad to be here. Beautiful. Actually, that's a pretty good. I mean, that's an interesting little segue into a discussion if we want. I mean, all of you on this panel are busy, busy human beings who just do a bunch of, again, multidisciplinary doesn't even cover it. You know, I'm curious about kind of, again, to echo back to Milton's question about like kind of what stuck with you from videos, but also, you know, again, pulling that question of how you got to where you got to with your piece and where what's happening next now that we've had, again, had a little bit of time away from it and have maybe a little bit of foresight going forward. I don't know if anyone wants to kind of get into some thoughts. Oh, classic Zoom, classic Zoom, don't make me call on you. <laughs> I can start. Yeah, Diana, okay. come on, Diana. <laughs> um, so when I was, when I saw Alia's and uh, Giovanni's piece, 
things that stuck out for me were in Giovanni about the voice of the actor and about truth and um, what what is that? What is our truth and what is my voice as uh, as an artist? So that was one thing. And for Alia's piece, it was the family. And my uh, growing up. I had the, most people had four choices, I had three. I didn't have the business person, but I had the lawyer, the doctor, and the engineer. And so the engineer and the doctor are out because I got a BA, not a B, <laughs> Bachelor of Science. So it had to go to the lawyer route. Um, and so when I was writing the test to see what, you know, the LSAT, um, I just stopped and I just started doodling. I just colored in all the, the dots and just made a picture. And then I left and I phoned my mom and I said, I definitely failed this, I'm not going to be a lawyer. <laughs> and she goes, that's okay. Uh, I don't know what to say. I honestly don't know what I want to do and what, a, what I want to be in my life. And I was just crying and she just said, just come home. So I came home and, and she's always said, you just do what makes you happy for the rest of your life. It took me a while to figure out what that was, but when I fell into theater, which is a very long story, so I don't want to take up the, the space for that, um, I, you know, that was, um, that was the light, and it wasn't just about I and me and what, um, who I was as an artist, but being part of a community. So it was we. So in my piece, it's about we being part of this um, supermodel. Uh, community where we're speaking I'm I'm speaking we and that we're all light so what is it about me what is what is my light in the world and with Alia she talks to her family and about how to dis that her parents were giving her um, feedback about the strongest way to denounce that 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 monolith that you know the whole motto minority so what do I where do I go um, uh, so my other mom, bes besides my mom and my parents, is a place that I go where I reflect, where there's solitude, where I can listen better and I'm heard better, and that is, that is the forest, that is the river, and so that's where I go. I go, that's one of my, I guess, quote unquote, offices. It's not the doctor's office, it's not the business uh, store. And it's not, you know, the engineering site, but that's my artist's office, and that's where I go to uh, create, to think, to listen. So that's where I went, and there I just sat listening to this here, where I stand, where I sit, is my first family. This is the earth, the land on which I was born. So from that, I just. Um, just uh, those words came out, the, a poem came out, and my audience was all there. It was like, um, it wasn't even pay what you can, it was free, there were birds, there were <laughs> trees, they're all talking to me, right? They're like, yeah, that's a good, I think you should, you know, that's a great word, yeah, what about me? And then, you know, what about play over here, right? So it was like just my playground, what about us? And so, they, they, so I went to different locations, I'm wandering around and I'm just repeating this mantra, how do I, dismantle the model minority um, um, I, I, I just be who I am I just am and I just build my own mantra I that's my that was that mantra for that day to um, as my reaction to the two other artists that spoke in the forms that they spoke who, what is my voice and where do I stand and those are the shoulders that I stand on to give me strength when other building uh, colonists are building um, uh, oppressive uh, structures to knock me down then I, I stand on mother nature's shoulders and I just be who I am and they, there is no judgment there so that's how I, I reacted to the whole thing is um my Thank just, you, Diana. Just my own mantra to keep me keep me going keep my family going gotta be you know that's a, one of the lessons be your own model um a be your own model my army seems like gosh <laughs> that video thank you i wonder if anyone wants to kind of respond or pick up from that and kind of respond courtney you look like you have a thought coming <laughs> no, i was just that's the face i make when i'm feeling 
dead air to make it seem like I'm having sure. hateful thinking. But I, I'll blather on briefly and just sure. is the is the question Wallace? The question, well, the, I'll give you I'll give you the question in terms of being like I'm curious about what stuck with you from the responses that you did encounter on your track, or you know whether or not there's anything that you have a bit of kind of you're still mulling over given that we've had a bit of time from these pieces now. Right. No, I don't have a good response to that. I was just literally just going to tell you all that I just, in creating mine, because Diana was talking about form, I just ripped crystals off. Mm. Uh, I just wanted to say that. Uh, <laughs> so, again, narrow parameters. I got one video, like sometimes you get two, but I only had the one and a crystal yeah. is like, oh, crystal seems good. I'm just going to rip it off. Except she cooked in hers and I can't cook. So I just put makeup on. And no, you bake the face instead, which we love to see, which we love to see. All right. Yeah. No, but I there were you. already so many uh, similarities in some, in some ways, and then some also some, some very big differences um, between, I think, experiences that both of us had had. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and now my baby's awake. Um, that uh, it was easy to just rip hers off. I'm now going to pass it on to someone smarter and more eloquent than me. I know, I appreciate you, Courtney. I wonder too, I mean, Taya, if you, I can bring you into the conversation because you also approached your response through a poetic form. Um, and I wonder, you know, being in conversation here with Diana as well, if there's anything that's kind of pinging for you in your brain about that kind of, that choice, I suppose. Well, I just, I couldn't, I just couldn't bear to bring myself to like be myself in it. I was just, cause I received Allison's, Allison Wong and Richard Lee's and they were very contrasting. <laughs> and there were a lot of feelings from both of them. You know, I felt like I was cheering for Allison in, in the video. And I'm like, yes, like go Allison. Yes. You know, and wanted to like, was really felt empowered and re was really, cause that was the first, first video I watched, but then also Richard's. And I was like, oh man, like, <sighs> all the feels again but very like deflated and depressed and it's like yep 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 and all that nodding and then that final um animated graphic of that wrapped up doll mm -hmm. oriented fantasy it just triggered something in my mind and I just started jotting well first of all I was jotting down different things that were really resonating with me after the second time when I was viewing these videos and I don't know, because I also grew up playing, playing a lot of classical piano, a lot of um, um, classical music has ripped off Asian culture and still does, you know, um, Madame Butterfly, Turin Dot, to name a few, some operas, but also just like Orientalism and what that whole thing is. Um, and so it, so I was just playing with the word like fantasy and then fantasy as a musical genre Mm -hmm. um, in and of itself so then this like I remembered oh I would play this this Mozart piano fantasy and I was like oh I can I it's just it was still in my fingers I started playing it because I didn't really know what to say or what to do and I was like what am I going to do I only have five minutes I only have three days and all of these kind of parameters but it just started to flow out so I started playing this piano song that was feeling really good and then this fable started just coming out and I was writing this and it and it just wanted to be that I literally wrote it in like maybe a half an hour this poem and I was like oh okay this is something you know but I was I was riffing off of like what Allison was talking about like how there's power in silence how there's power in staying silent and and what that is and how you can transform that and like take it back and do something with that yeah. um and that there is resistance in that as well and strength so I was playing a lot with that, but also just really wanting to kind of um, press into the wound, so to speak, of what an oriental fantasy and, and I guess being an opera singer and having played so many different roles, especially so many gendered stereotypes and then Asian stereotypes as well. I was like, I got to do the makeup. I just thought of the makeup thing. And then, I don't know, it just kind of, it all pieced together and then bada bing, bada boom, there was a video. Bada bing, bada boom. There was indeed a video and an experience and we value it. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. Well, and then I guess I'll, you know, Allison, I want to weave you in here too a little bit about that kind of, because I love that yours and Richard's pieces 
we're in that same tier, I guess. One day audience, you may get the honeycomb structure, who can say, I don't know. But it was really that contrast and that buoyancy that you kind of led with and that tonal switch in the middle of your piece. I wonder if you can talk a little bit about that, especially in relation to kind of now having seen some of the other videos, um, the echoes of that as it were. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I received Amanda's video um, and what I latched onto in that piece was the feeling of scrutiny, um, just seeing those, the, the images of those women sort of reflected back and just the eyes, like I, there were eyes all over the screen, like there were so many photos um, and just really feeling gazed upon. Um, and there was a, a real desire in me to like shed that um, and kind of like wanting to be in not that nightmare. <laughs> um, and, and I related, I related very strongly to that, especially as someone who doesn't fit the body type of what is like in the media as representation, sort of like the blanket representation of, of a Chinese woman. Um, I like that scrutiny is very real and I wanted to shed that in the video so hard. And so that journey that that video starts with is like walking away from it and then like breaking out of it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, a dream. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, I think it speaks to, um, you know, imagining, imagining better. Like I've been thinking about, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember, I have to figure this out and credit it properly, but I was watching something or reading something where, where they were talking about identity and um, you know, our relationship to identity as who we are, um, but also maybe more so who we are becoming or who we want to be um, and feeling that in, in this piece, the resistance, feeling the resistance and, and wanting to break out of, you know, this, this scrutiny and this sort of pegging into a really small hole um, of what, you know, being an Asian person or woman is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that laughter. I mean, you know, my thoughts on the laughter, that was one thing that it just, <laughs> it just burst through. And I know it's like the joy has always, was always there in the piece, but there's something about hearing that specific, like that ruthless joy where it was like, aha, <laughs> watch this. You know what I mean? If you're going to watch, watch this. So I, I really can't thank you enough for that kind of that, again, that levity that you brought. Um, I yes, wonder, you know, Taya, you picked up on the kind of quietness and the reclamation of that one. And I'm, I'm curious, and the joy of that one. And I'm curious, you know, Joanna, you and I had a bit of a discussion during our dramaturgy meeting about what is it, what do you do with the quietness? What do you do with that when it comes to kind of the work that you espouse and you talk about in your piece about what comes next? How do you actually do work towards liberation, especially in a field like this one, especially from kind of your position as a designer and someone who kind of grapples with that technicality of theater. I wonder if you can speak to that. That's not a nugget of a question at all, Wallace. That's good. <laughs> uh, fuck. Um, I don't know. I think you just do it whatever way it feels right. I think like the piece uh, I ended up watching, I got William's piece and that was what I was responding to. And um, there was just so much visceral feelings. And I also did the same. Um, I just sort of, same as a lot of folks, like I just sat down and wrote the first, the impulses that I had. And what sat with me a lot was the space between things. And I'm trying not to um, think too hard on, on the path that I took earlier today to watch the videos. But um, I think in order, in order to reclaim that place, it's just to be comfortable is what is it for me to feel comfortable in that discomfort of the things that I lost as far as an identity that I, I 
actively said goodbye to and I'm trying to re-welcome back into my life like what does that reclamation look like and then what kind of space or silence will it take to do that and and recognizing uh, I think I said it in the piece like silence looks different for everyone and in different cultures it means something very different and just even owning that piece and saying you know what my silence is not your silence it doesn't mean what you think it is and I'm okay with that now and I think that's taken a lot of time of just like sitting in space and being patient and just kind of like owning the awkwardness and being like okay we're just gonna sit in this a little bit and see how like what comes up and and what comes up usually is something really authentic if we let it come through so hopefully we can slow things down a bit and listen to those parts of our lives and I think that that's what I am uh that's what I'm I'm hoping to embark on so yeah I don't know how that relates to design but you know well, I mean, design, I mean, I'm sure there's a dramaturgical book connection, but you know, you know, yeah. I think it speaks for itself. I'll sit in the silence of that. I love that. I really do appreciate that. Um, and I wonder, you know, it's the man the I have so many queries about kind of how this came to be this, like, because I, I, collage is not the apt word and after hearing kind of the way this panel has talked about how they've assembled their pieces and what they're sitting with still I'm curious now especially for you with hindsight what is it what does it do to the video that you created yeah <laughs> the video was very stressful for me to create I think it was a lot of pressure and I'm kind of stressed right now <laughs> so like everyone whereas like some people like didn't watch other people's videos you had to go through mine to get here today <laughs> so I'm a little bit, I feel very honored and I hope I did everyone justice in the videos. Like I, cause I was a producer on this. I like, I watched everybody's full unedited videos as they came in and that's what I responded to. Like not the edited five minutes. I saw everybody's full things. And I sat for three days with like a notebook, like writing notes, like with everyone, just all of your responses, just like the lines that stood out to me the most and what really resonated with me I think as a person I'm not very I don't like I'm not that outgoing I'm not that like talkative I don't really like stand up for like I don't know like it's such a hard topic for me to talk about and like being given the chance to like say my piece it's very emotional also oh my god I'm so emotional because like this is like my baby I've been working on it for so many months and now it's here so I'm just happy that everyone's here. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm like Wallace earlier. It's just crying. I'm a crying mess today. I would never <laughs> cry. <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone's videos like kind of ruined me. Like <laughs> they're so great, but like, it was hard. Like I wasn't, when I was like doing the responses, it just like, it's a very hard topic for me to talk about. And like, oh my God, what a mess. <laughs> I'm sorry. I like, yeah, I think I wrote that like, thank you for sharing your words so I could like say my own words because I find it very hard to like articulate just like how I feel about like being a model minority like it's a really hard topic and like I do have a lot of support systems and I'm very happy for like the life that I have created and like chosen for myself but it's also like a challenge that I have chosen and like I will continue to like fight this battle and like I don't know, like strive for like a happy, like full life, but like, I'm not gonna lie. It's like not super easy, right? Like it's really challenging. Like there are some really hard things. Like it's not the most glamorous thing all the time. And so like being able to, I guess like tap into that and just show these clips of like joy with my family in contrast to like the very deep topic that we're talking about. Uh, it just like, it means a lot. Yeah, it was really hard for me to like get through everybody and then like try and do everybody justice because it it took so much of my like heart to like put out there. And I'm very proud of this project and like I've shared it with so many people and it's just like it's very liberating, like being able to talk about it, even though I'm crying so hard right now. <laughs> like yeah. I'm very proud that like this is something that we get yeah. to do. And yeah, I'm just like honored. Like I, I think I wrote in my blog post that like a lot of these artists, like a lot of you guys, like you don't know the impact that you've had on me. Like specifically, like I chose to do theater because like 
I saw like amazing Asian actors and like I chose some of you like you were my group of people that I chose it was just like very wholesome project for me everybody <laughs> so yeah I hope you like the video one. oh Sam stop it now stop it now you know we love you you know we love you you know we got you and please do not ever apologize for the bravery it takes to bloody love like the way you do all right like thank you I mean it I mean it <laughs> Thank you all, panel two. Apparently I've got two minutes left with you. Two minutes, can you believe? So before we kind of wrap up this panel, um, Courtney, first of all, hope the baby has been rocked. Hope it is all. He's, all he's great. He actually went, he was so good. He went right back down. And yeah. I, may I, Wallace, take 30 seconds to be slightly less flippant than I was earlier? Absolutely, um, the floor's yours. Not that I can articulate myself any more clearly, but I was a bit flippant earlier. Uh, because I'm a clown, but also uh, I do have an I have a nervous energy in speaking on this panel, and and that's also represented in in, in my piece to some degree because I I'm always very conscious as a as a as a Hapa person, as a very white passing Hapa person, of the ways I benefit from white supremacy and the white privilege I carry in the world, and the way that intersects with my model minorityness is that the model minorityness that is projected on me is always it, it intersects with the white supremacy in, the, in that I often people project all oh, the best attributes of model minorityness on me. And in turn, uh, the seeking of my own understanding of my own identity, I in turn project some of that. And you might see that in my video. I, those of you who might have seen my video and those of you who haven't, I, I'm in, kind of interviewing my mom in it mm -hmm. as I put makeup on my face and, uh, and in interviewing my mom you can kind of see me projecting my own ideas of model minorityness on my own mother, I think, to some degree. And, and so I just, I guess I just wanted to voice that I feel very, uh, again, privileged to be part of this project um, because I'm just conscious of where I sort of sit in relationship right. to those notions. And that uh, I think it's also just very remarkable that everybody has very different experiences. I'm very conscious you're going from watching me kind of describe it in a, in a loose kind of way, a very privileged experience in terms of my relationship to my Asian-ness. And then you go into William's video, for example, which describes mm -hmm. this incredibly violent and painful encounter and the variety in that journey, um, just acknowledging it. So me less flippant, thank you. <laughs> and us always grateful. Thank you so much panel two. We will chat forever and ever as always. Um, been a pleasure. Been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I never do this on Zoom. <laughs> All right, we've got beautiful panel three. Amanda, oh, man, Byron, and Andrew looking amazing. Kevin looking amazing. Milton also looking amazing. And Giovanni, as always. And Crystal. Hello. Hello, hello, panel three. We're gonna do the same old thing. Let me see, am I missing anyone? Kevin, Giovanni, Milton, Amanda, Byron, Andrea, Crystal. I think we are all assembled. Very cool. So if I can invite you all to introduce yourself briefly, if that's all right, I have, I can start us off with Amanda since you are first on my screen, if that's helpful. And then maybe you could pass it on to someone else. Sounds great. Thanks, Wallace. Uh, my name's Amanda Lynn, like the instrument, which apparently my parents did not know when they were naming me. Um, what am I? I am a writer. Um, I don't know, I do things. I also am the development coordinator for Cahoots. If you like this and wanna give us some money, um, I'm not actually gonna do that right now though. Um, yeah, uh, I was right at the beginning. So it was so cool getting to watch everybody's cause I had no idea what anyone else made. Like all I saw was Tanish's video. So this was very lovely. And I will pass this along to Giovanni. Oh, thanks Amanda. And thank you Cahoots for starting this amazing dialogue. Uh, my name is Giovanni C. Uh, I am currently the oldest student enrolled at the University of Calgary. Uh, Milton, over to you. Thanks, Giovanni. Uh, my name is Milton Lim. Um, my pronouns are he, him. I'm an artist. I will pass it over to Crystal. Hey, y'all. I'm uh, Crystal Lee, she, her. Um, yeah, I'm a production manager and technical director. This is my dog, Liko. She's been very loud, so I'm just calming her down. <laughs> uh, bonus panelist. 
uh, yeah, and I'm just really happy to be in this in this space. I'm calling this my Toronto performance debut. <laughs> so I really appreciate this the, the platform to be vulnerable, folks. Thanks. I'll pass it to Kevin. Thanks, Crystal. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kevin. Uh, I use he him pronouns. Uh, I'm a Hakka Chinese uh, theater creator and producer. Um, and I'll pass on to Andrea and Byron. Hi. 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 <laughs> I'm Andrea. I'm Byron. <laughs> we we'll, we'll, get better. we'll get better we at this. this. We'll get better, I swear. Uh, I'm <laughs> uh, a Filipino-Canadian uh, uh, artist. It's hard with the two. It's... <laughs> It, even in the process, it's challenging. <laughs> Those two of us trying to come to the same vision. But anyway, our artists, hello. Uh, yeah, uh, theater artists, creators, writers, um, movements, somatic practitioners. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm um, grateful for this space. Thank you for this community, Cahoots. This opportunity to have this dialogue and to express. I, just, I wish we could all be together at some point and yeah. that would be awesome. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have a cookout one day, don't worry. Don't worry about it. It's coming. It's coming. So I wanted to jump to this panel. Milton, since you're like literally in the center of my screen and because that question has kind of been plaguing me, I'm going to pose it to you. I mean, my friend, what was, what stuck? I wrote down my answer. So thank you. Oh, I love, of course you did. Come on. Yeah. Uh, Byron and Andrea, I had the privilege of uh, receiving your video as well as Kimberly. Um, I was struck by Kimberly's statements on work and effort and deservingness and uh, the kind of game of meritocracy in the arts. Um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it's been a while since I watched your video, Mayuri, right? Um, I was very touched by the, the kind of youth, youthfulness that you captured as well as the hope, but also the attentiveness and the, the kind of mm -hmm. um, the game of trying to pay attention and trying to comprehend what's being said. Um, and so, yeah, my video did take the form of a spelling bee. I woke up the next morning going like, that's it. And, um, and so I was really interested in the position of a spectator, knowing that both the videos that I was given um, were focused on, I think very much like the guide we were given for like best practices around how to film, where like how to light yourself and your face and everything. Um, so I was interested in the objecthood of the camera as the power of framing and power and being seen through a particular lens. And I think actually watching Kevin's, that's also consistent in yours, um, like the model minority. So yeah, that's me. I'll pass it back to you. Love that echo. Appreciate that. I wonder if anyone else wanted to kind of pick up on that, um, on that question as well, if there's anything that particularly stuck. Um, way to talk about the piece. Uh, maybe I can go since uh, Justin just mentioned mine too. Like, uh, so I was responding to Giovanni and Joanna, which is a really interesting pair to to respond to. Mm -hmm. and yeah, different uh, uh, topics, like way way that they took the topic and also style. Um, with Giovanni, you know, uh, as I was listening to you speak, Giovanni, I was really thinking about like generations, systems, rules, change, passing the baton, um, cycles, and um, and with Joanna, I, I was really uh, moved by the kind of, it, it felt like listening to somebody speak with their teeth kind of together too, like it, it like, and it was um, really visceral. And, and also the, the working towards something, like seeing an artist also put their piece together uh, was really interesting. But I thought what they shared was um, this acknowledgement of rules um, this this questioning of what the rules are, breaking the rules, arrive, like having arrived somewhere and looking back and then taking account of what the cost has been. Um, I found that really interesting. And um, what's lost and what's gained in getting what you think you want at the beginning, um, I found was, was a really interesting thing, um, joining them together. And, and then I thought about, you know, my own experience of being, you know, Asian Canadian and like a family excursion for our family would not be to go to the park, it would be to go to a winner's. Yeah. Like, so to me, that is very much Scarborough, like Asian Canadian experience. Um, I don't know if that resonates for other people, but it does in my family. Um, and- um, <laughs> It looks like it does. Oh, great, great. And I just thought, you know, like, um, I, after watching those two videos, I was walking down the street. It just so happened to be phase two of reopening. Things were reopening and I, saw this huge line and I was like, who would line up for that? And I just thought we're all playing this game. So some of us are playing this game of model minority, whether we're aware of it or whether we're not. And like, there's um, something really, the word insidious is used in a lot of the pieces too. Like um, 
what I found really interesting as well um, was just that this lineup reminded me of this writer that was talking about right wing Americans um, who believe that they're in a lineup towards getting the American dream and it's minorities that are getting in their way. Yeah. And I, I thought about some of the stories I'd received in Scarborough and they're the same stories. It's just that it's other minorities. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was like, ooh, something, something's in this. So I tried to just throw them together. <laughs> And you gave us something. That's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very hefty, hefty response. That one, Kevin, just the different layers of it. I've had quite a lot of fun and also the humor, the humor of it. And I think, you know, Giovanni, I want to kind of juxtapose a little bit of that kind of humorous intervention that Kevin has with that very, there's a lot of histories that you bring forward with your piece, Giovanni. And I'm curious now, kind of now that you've seen those histories espoused by yourself and then now shared in relation with all these other ones, what's, you know, what's going through your mind? What, what, what will come next, I suppose? Oh, uh, what's through my mind is how, what an incredible time it is for, for Asian Canadian theater and how, how, you know, it was kind of one thing 30 years ago and now it's as diverse as theater itself, which is exactly how it should be. So I feel heartened by uh, the, the incredible creativity and courage uh of of all the people here it, it it's it i'm really inspired so um yeah i just feel so you know i feel really quite moved uh seeing how fertile it's become over time so yeah, yeah it's stuff is growing it perpetually is growing it's really fascinating to watch the whole garden come together as it were um mm. you know and i wonder a little bit too with your piece um Again, it, I'm thinking a little bit more about form and whatnot. I know this is a slightly tangential question, um, but I'm wondering about whether or not you have any thoughts about kind of other forms that were used in the honeycomb structure, about different tactics that were used to address the kind of the same conversation that we were having throughout the entire oh, piece. Yeah, they were all infinitely more creative than mine. I mean, <laughs> I, no, seriously, I remember because I got I was I was responding to to Milton's and and Williams, and they were remarkable. I mean, be, beyond the, the the visceral reaction, you know, with with with, with William, just just how um, you know, it's not just about violence upon one's person, but it's an assault on dignity. And then Milton is like what you'd expect from Milton. It's it's playful and inquisitive and subversive but beyond that, i mean they're freaking gorgeous like they're, they're beautifully <laughs> composed and the videography is extraordinary and the lighting and I, I remember i think i talked to either you or samantha in a panic it's like i can't fucking do that i don't i don't know how to do that i don't have time to learn how to make a video and if i did i'm not smart enough to learn how to make a video so yeah no in terms of form i i'm, I'm kind of ashamed because you know i did what i know how to do which is you know sit on my ass and go blah 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 kind of made a career out of I'm, I'm doing doing it right now in fact so uh yeah no i i just i, I thought the the form was exciting as anything and and i see no like legit wish i knew how to do that but i i don't so no but it was it was really cool to see how um just remarkably visually creative people are no i mean i'll say this much i think there's plenty of people in the cohort that would helpfully i would love to like kind of maybe hold a workshop at some point of how to do this but more so than that you know this whole idea of kind of your form it was not at all to shade your form there was something really really telling about where how the fact that you responded to both milton and william and there was this direct address where if if the method is sitting on your ass and talking then i'm going blah 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 there's something really powerful about those blah blah blahs that came through because it was just you know the resonance well, I, you know Honestly, it, within this cohort, what I bring is a perspective of longevity because mm -hmm. I think I'm not, and I apologize to anybody who was active in 92. I think it might've been Diana and me um, in 1992. And, uh, you know, uh, there were so, there, were, there weren't a ton of East Asian Canadian artists then. And what's really, what, what moves me is the number who aren't here now on this call because they didn't stay in mm. in theater um and they were every bit as talented as i am they were every bit as hard working but um this is a cruel cruel occupation or vocation we have and i wish that uh honestly if i had one wish it was that everybody who is here gets to have a 30-year career because it doesn't happen to everybody and i wish it could you know so yeah 
no, we appreciate the stance of longevity. Really, really, really useful in the, in the honeycomb of it all. And I wonder a little bit, Crystal, like there's a, there's a, towards the end of your video, you have that, we cut out so many little, little pieces, but you know, one day 2.0 supermodel will have it all, I promise. But you know, there was this little piece that we did get to kind of get from you about you're hoping towards that leadership will not be, I'm just thinking again about Giovanni's point about leadership here. Um, yeah, I'm curious to know if you have any kind of further thoughts on that idea of hoping what, hoping towards what comes next. Oh, that's, uh, that's a good question. I mean, I think like I, I had so much to say in my video, which is I, they gave me, you know, the five to eight minute uh, Talk about guideline and I, I gave, I submitted 759. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Um, but yeah, in, in my structure of my video, for those of you who, who didn't get a chance to see it yet, um, I kind of talked a little bit about the complications of, and of course my own lived experience of you know being a woman, uh, being Hapa, um, and like this kind of my imposterness around uh, taking space in, in Asian spaces. Um, and I think leadership is probably another complication in, in what that means through model minority. Uh, so yeah, I guess what I said there was that like in thinking about where, how I landed in theater, I really did it out of spite. Like I did it because so many people told me I couldn't do it and it like fed the rage <laughs> and it's probably not healthy, but even now I've been in, in, you know, doing this for 10 years now or been interested in theater for over 10 years now and it's still the most powerful thing driving me is, yeah. is um, yeah, all that sort of like white supremacy culture, all of those um, predominantly white space spaces and, and uh, yeah, the things that kind of bring you down uh, through microaggressions and so on and so forth. So um, yeah, and my message, you know, I really wanted to say, I, I hope that there's more authenticity for, for those who want to be leaders. I hope it's not out of spite. I hope it's, <laughs> this is like forward thinking. The next generation, I hope you're like more proud to be a leader as opposed to like fighting to do it because no, everyone else told you you couldn't do it. Um, yeah, and I think a lot of like my passion now, I guess maybe I am transitioning out of spite and more like passion to, to help nice. empower <laughs> other people, like empower others to do that. You know, a lot of like the advocacy work that I do specifically in, in production is is geared towards um, how do we get more BIPOC women out there mm -hmm. and how do we also become more aware of like the values of, of the spaces that we're going into. If we're not considered creatives, <laughs> some of us don't consider us creatives, you know, like how do we still um, get as much value from like a creative space as we can mm -hmm. without being abused? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's sort of what I'm feeling. Not really an answer in terms of like what, what's next, but what's next? I hope more leadership. I hope more unspiteful leadership. <laughs> and then Taya also dropped in there, but sometimes the rage is useful. Very interesting, spite and rage. I will say as well, just to give you a little bit of like a, it's not me being like heartening or affirmation, but it is something along those lines. You mentioned this thing in, the, in your response where you talk about not having an older sister figure, I suppose, to kind of look up to as you're navigating that. I just want to kind of give you a little bit of this, like, well, I don't know. Thanks for being a big sister in that way. You know what I mean? You're showing up now and it's just, it's, it's feeling it. I'm very much feeling it. And who knows? <laughs> who knows what comes next with that kind of, with that kind of energy? Thank you. I want to ask and shift a little bit again, back into this idea of form and questioning, Andrea and Byron, you are our, our magic duo. And in many ways, yo, shout out to my art for like the trio dream here. I'm curious, I'm sure we're all curious about kind of how, how that came to be. Yeah, um, we watched Taya's and Crystal's and uh, we had the luxury of having someone to bounce ideas off of, which really helped but it also uh for the first iteration of what we were going to present was just us on video talking to each other and sort of like interviewing each other after watching those two videos and uh that turned into this like epic ridiculously like, long it was like 22 minutes or something yeah and where we <laughs> talked about a lot of things but but we're like oh okay well that's long that's too long and uh what it 
then boiled down to after more and more conversations is like we're parents of a two-year-old now and uh we don't want her to go through the same shit that we went through so what do we do what do we say and how do we how do we pass on what we know now and also like our hopes but then also you, you know be realistic with what the world is and and, and how they're going to see her yeah right and like mm -hmm. and the things she might encounter and how to not yeah let that affect her worth <laughs> guys she's going to daycare starting tomorrow it's so very like emotional time for us emotional, so please <laughs> like i'm just gonna warn you Mm. Oh man, don't watch the oh man, and now you're watching this video too. So much, guys. It was so much. And you know, even everybody. when watching the video, and I'm like, man, she was so small then. Oh yeah, <laughs> she was so small. Uh, uh, so we decided to, to make this love letter. Basically, it was a love letter mm. of of grounded in in the reality of <laughs> our current world and 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 just and just really hoping for a uh, hoping for for us to be able to pass on what we know in 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 a way that is going to help her somehow it was so desperate i think it was like so desperate uh, an attempt to pass down lovingly realistic ugly world truths yeah you did it pretty beautifully i got to say <laughs> i got to say with 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 the kind of grace that it takes like from from parents who really love their kid and it it really it I like I, I mean in our own dramaturgical conversations you know we've had that discussion about how it sat and it was just one of those things where it's 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 <clears throat> to be held like that with that kind of honesty and that kind of generosity about about you know who you are is is a gift and I'm curious you know <laughs> I'm curious about kind of what you think about what my you might you know grow to grow to do and respond to this video in the future. I mean, these are all speculative thoughts, but I'm curious, you know. <laughs> I mean, the world the world is different. It's always changing, you know. Like, <laughs> sometimes we play the game, it's like, uh, if you could go back in time, <laughs> would where when, when would you go? And then we always go like, well, are we still people of color? <laughs> like, Am I still a woman? Because like, they're not in the past. Like it's it's either now or maybe a bit in the future. I don't know. So or like I've always said, pre-colonial times. Like oh yes, pre-colonial Philippines. That I'll go cool. back then. I'll do that. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's hard because like yeah, she's coming into a world, but there's there's also possibility in that world that you know like this can't doesn't doesn't have to, to be the way it is. Like you know, so so some of the questions is like how do we how do we uh, stop this cycle? Like, how do we disrupt this model minority myth? Yeah, right? yeah. And I think for me, in, in some of our discussions, is you know, like white supremacy is, and in many uh, in many videos, it, that theme has come up of like, you know, that's the thing that's that created the rules. It's their that it's their game, and and we go along with it because we kind of feel good about it. But at the same time, it's damaging to us, and it's pitting us against other people. And 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 yeah, and like if we could all just like see each other equally. Uh, then, then the world can be can be a different place than it is. Yeah, yeah I love that. Different, not necessarily better or worse. Just kind of, it has to change. I actually, I'm glad for the chats coming up because that was another thing on my list of little cues. Did you folks get the chance to hear kind of how that audio is weaved? I mean, this is something that's been everyone's weaved in a certain way, but I'm curious since we have yeah. Milton here and you both here. Milton. Yeah, that totally blew us away. Uh, if, away. If anyone didn't see ours or Milton's, Milton directly took pieces of our audio yes. and and seamlessly wove it into his video and yeah. his concept. So it was so interesting for for me and I, and I think for you too to see our words in a different way, yeah, in a different tone, a different style, a different form. Uh, and I, it was just so creative uh, and and so we were so honored. Yeah, honored, yeah. and we just felt like. This is incredible what you've done with it, Milton. Absolutely. So thanks for that. It was it was a ride for us for sure. Such a gift. Thank you. I was also um, led into that a little bit because I think you both gave a PDF of the uh, the text that you had written, mm -hmm. right? So it kind of it was a nice kind of prompt towards like, oh, this is text that kind of allows me to analyze it and like in at least two different ways. And so yeah, again, I, I mentioned it. Uh, and I, I don't mean it as any joke. I it, thank you for the quality of voice acting. It was just so easy for it to see slotted in in different ways. And so I played with it quite a lot. So thank you. Super cool. Thank you.
<laughs> we love a good echo. All right, thank you all. Amanda, since we're talking about like the appearance of things, I think your piece is one of those ones that kind of really, as since, especially since it was so, it was one of the first ones in this kind of structure, you really dived in into that kind of analysis and critique of what does it actually look like um, and what does that kind of looking like make you feel and experience? And I'm curious a little, you know, to know a little bit more because also your piece was so intricately edited. And that's such an Amanda Lynn thing. You know what I mean? Like I, like I said, when I saw, I saw your piece, I was like, Amanda, Amanda. So I wonder if you could talk to us a little bit about kind of your process and, and your thoughts around approaching the model minority myth from that, that particular intersection. Yeah. Oh, that, that's really nice. Thanks, Wallace. I was wildly nervous. I think I'm like on the opposite side of Giovanni where like, I think what I bring is freshness. I don't know. I might be one of the youngest people. I don't know all your ages, but I was so <laughs> nervous. I think I was one of the few people that had to add after the edits. Like I was shorter. I came in like under five minutes on my first draft because I was so nervous. I was like, I don't know if I'm saying anything useful, but I think what led me to the aesthetic choice of uh, for those who didn't see my video, I screen recorded my laptop. So I had my face on the webcam, but also different windows pulling up as well. And I think what drew, drove me to that was the fact that I'm always on my computer during the pandemic. I'm always staring at myself in the Zoom window, even if I try not to, like you probably saw me doing that many times throughout tonight, just staring at myself. And I also got into K-pop over the pandemic, which has been really fun in a lot of ways, but also like it's also a very problematic industry, which I won't get into right now. So I kind of drew on that. Um, yeah, just like I'm all, like I kind of thought of the different windows as like my thought processes like popping up. And like, as I'm looking at myself, I'm judging myself based on other people. And yes, K-pop, yes. If anyone wants to learn the dances with me, um, let me know. <laughs> I don't know if that answered your question. No, it definitely, it definitely leads, it definitely is tethered to it. And I'm wondering a little bit too, because again, because of your position being so early on in this structure, now that you've moved through it, and also your relationship with cahoots, I'm thinking about all of these little bits. Um, do you have any retroactive thoughts? Has anything kind of cropped up from those tracks that you're kind of like, huh, still going to hold on to that for a bit? I um, yes, one thing was that I, I didn't watch, um, I don't think I saw the other ones that used makeup. I'm definitely going to go back and watch them all. Um, but I was interested that that came up multiple times and not like it wasn't directly following me. So they hadn't seen my video, but I think that that's just like maybe an instinct, especially for um, like, yeah, just like to, in terms of model, like that kind of brings up appearances right away. Mm -hmm. But I'm re also really glad that Jeff Ho um, said that he didn't know yet because I think that also because I was at the beginning like I haven't had time to process any of this yet I just watched them all and came straight here so uh, I don't know that I have too much else to say right now other than it was like really incredible to see what everyone made and I can't wait to go back and back and back yeah. and yes yeah, Euro Truck Sim Simulator 2 good game very relaxing while I was working from home sometimes I'd like commute home in my truck um, <laughs> highly recommend Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I think speechless is probably a really useful word in terms of in terms of kind of where I'm at too. Um, and yet we speak. Oh. <laughs> this has been a really, really beautiful panel. I'm, I'm cognizant of us having to kind of move into some audience questions. So if if there's any kind of lingering little thoughts from you folks, panel three, before we shift into those audience cues, anything? I just want to say, Wallace and the whole Cahoots team, Samantha, Amanda, Tanisha, you folks are the bomb digs. Like, also, I had some audio troubles on my video, and Samantha, like, I sent an email at noon, and Samantha just, like, spent, I think, a, a few hours, like, re-editing some stuff for me. So, really shout out to... And it's like such an art to do some good moderation. So great job, Wallace. Oh, please, it's, it's, please with a group like this. Like I said, it's wild that I get to do this. Um, big thank you, big thank you. I'm, I'm gonna pass it on to, I think, Lisa or Sam in regards to audience cues. Thank you, panel three. Thank you very much. Feels like a spelling bee of sorts, eh? That kind of show. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Awesome. Tell us, Lisa, what do we got to do? All right. As I remove folks from the spotlight, I am also inviting our audience to ask questions. So the way that'll work is if you want to come online, like on video, 
just put your name in the chat dash question like I'm going to be doing right now in the chat so that we can start like a line, like an order, and I can just call on you to come on video and ask a question. Um, and if you're not feeling the, <laughs> the video part, but would like to type in a question, that would be phenomenal as well. So you can type in the, the chat what your question is, and I'll read it out loud. If it is specifically for someone um, on the artist team or the Coots team, I'll spotlight them and I'll get them to ask. But I think we have a fir our first question from Mary. So Mary, I'm going to spotlight Hi. you. Awesome. All right, what's your question? Um, okay, so I am in the older age category. This is Amanda's my daughter. And I was, I am part of this Asian uh, women group and they were talking about ageism. And um, in our culture, this the respect for the elder and, you know, how we call um, our elders, aunties and uncles and all that. And so the younger people were saying they felt that there was some discrimination for them for being younger, that automatically their thoughts or their ideas were dismissed. So I'm curious because I'm looking at the, uh, pan or the panel and the generally pretty young people, whether that was their experience in the theater world. Um, or if it's just people that I was talking to in the leadership role. Thank you, Mary. Does anybody want to field that question? I mean, I I'm I'm here, so I guess I'll start. Um, it's interesting because I feel like there's definitely a big put. Well, I I'm also like very self conscious all the time. You know this, mom. So I feel like I naturally I'm like, oh, I'm the youngest. Like that must be a reason that I should feel self conscious. But I think in theater, there's also a big push for emerging artists um, to like get new voices in. And I actually notice almost a bit of the opposite where like once you get past that emerging phase, whatever that even means, there's suddenly less opportunities. And something that I've been thinking about a lot and talking about at, uh, like my work is um, just that especially people who are marginalized in different ways may not emerge at the same time as others. So, and like suddenly they've emerged, but there's like, because they're not a younger age, there aren't as many opportunities to get involved, but I'd be happy to throw it to someone else who has more thoughts on that. Yes, would anybody else like to talk on this? Can I just get a clarification on, on the question? Sorry, I'm not sure I understand. Like, so is the question, do we feel that there is a, a sense of ageism within our industry? Yes, um, because that was what the conversation was in a, a different form, where they were experiencing that they had to respect their elders and therefore their ideas tended to be dismissed. Um, and they didn't have as much space to have a voice because of that. Yeah, I, I can't talk for everyone, but I can't speak for myself. Uh, like in, in teaching, I'm always about trying to empower the the voice of the artist, uh, regardless of age and regardless of their their level of um, experience, um, because I, I'm I'm I get I think uh, having been through what you're talking around, you know, older artists saying they know better or that they, they have we have to listen to their advice, we have to follow their sets of rules. I'm so over that, and so every artist that I can engage with is all about. Like, what is your voice? What is your identity? You are the future of making this theater. You know, yes, we can teach you the rules. Yes, we can teach you all the stuff, but your artistry, what you have to say, the, the truth of what you say is most important. So um, I, if there are folks out there who are like, you know, not really wanting to listen to what younger artists have to say, I, I feel very bad for them. I think that, that they are the future of our art. Um, and I think that we have to find better ways to talk and communicate in that way. That's all I'll say. Thanks, Richard. Would anybody else like to answer Mary's question? Milton. Milton here. Uh, I guess my, my initial response is it kind of depends on which arena is uh, we're talking about in terms of the arts, because I think in a lot of the regional theaters anyway, 
that there's a lot of seniority and that kind of perception around like who can do what and would you like to have an apprentice and all those kinds of conversations are much more different. But then um, also being on like granting juries for Canada Council, it's actually very positive to be young and also to be a person of color. Um, and so it, it really depends. And even regionally, I think it depends. I know on the West Coast in Vancouver, um, like diasporic uh, narratives are very important and are very uh, quite grantable, if I can say it like that. Um, that's also happened in Toronto, but maybe perhaps not the same in the prairies or in the territories. Uh, so I think it really heavily depends on the groups that we're working in uh, and the regions that we come from. I know that's not really one answer, but just like extra context and a thought. Thanks, Milton. Awesome, thank you so much for your question, Mary. I'm going to uh, invite Angela son to turn on their video so that we can. Hi, Lisa. Question. Hello. I'm not wearing pants right now, so oh I'm gosh. not going to turn on my video. That it's 950. <laughs> we understand it's a late, it's late. We get it. We get it. But you are more than welcome to ask your question here. Go for it. Um, hi, my name is Angela Sun Jian Shu. It's been a long time since I've said my name in Mandarin. Um, uh, one thing that really struck me about this panel um, was the vulnerability to use a word that uh, I got from Kevin Matthew Wong um, about um, having to respond to another person's work. And sometimes I think the insecurities it can bring about on our, uh, you know, in relation to our own work and, and the anxieties around that. Um, and also, as we all know, we are told that we are in a very competitive industry um, in which we're often sort of placed in competition with one another. Um, and something else I heard a lot throughout the panel um, is people saying, um, that, uh, can we do this again? I haven't done anything like this in the past, or, you know, there's not enough of this. And so I have sort of like a two part question. The first question is, what do you think is, you know, why do you think we don't have more of this? You know, why do you think we don't have more of this sort of, um, uh, collective Asian creation. And second of all, the question is, you know, Asian identity itself is such a huge umbrella, um, but an umbrella that encompasses a lot of very personal, very different experiences. So how does Asian artists, can we do these things that respond collectively to the Asian identity while at the same time maintaining um, the differences and, you know, and reminding people that we all have different political, cultural, ethnic um, uh, identities, you know, under this Asian umbrella. Um, I would love to hear just, you know, people riffing on that. Thank you. End of thought. Thank you, Angela. Are there any artists who would like to take on that question or both of those questions? Yeah, Kevin. I can, I'm laughing because uh, Angela and I chat all the time about these topics. <laughs> but I, I think that the second question is definitely on, on, on my mind a lot, you know, like um, from my experience, so I'm Hakka Chinese and Hakka identity is so um, fragmented in terms of like, there's no, even the, the dialect is not unified across the different uh, diasporas. Like, so there's no unifying language. There's not you know, um, I, there isn't a common story necessarily. So it's like a, a trying to weave a story. And I think the thing about what I, I find really interesting, a little bit troubling about like the flattening of like Asian is that it's actually our oppression that is bringing us together in this moment. So it's like, how are, how can we all just be those hands that are pushing against um, in, in various ways? It's funny that uh, Aliyah's here because it's thinking about your piece actually. Um, and uh, was it your mom that said, like, you know, even within a Filipino community, right, there's 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 uh, division and discrimination. And um, among early uh, Chinese Canadians, there definitely was that, 
experience as well. So yeah, I think it's, I, I, what I was really excited about for this project was just that there was such a diverse representation of experiences and forms and that it's kind of impossible. The impossibility of it is also very exciting, I guess. Well, yeah. Yeah. I think I put my video on and now I'm here. <laughs> okay, so I'll try. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I think I, I really, really echo a lot of what Kevin said. And oh, Angela, always, you know, you're, yeah, just the way you frame things is amazing in your mind. Um, so, yeah, so I really love what you said, Kevin, about like the flattening of identity. Um, I guess like this is just maybe like an experience to add and not really like a solution or really the reason or an answer, maybe not an answer, but when I moved, so I am a Muslim Filipino and I am uh, like, I'm a Tausug. So we're like indigenous peoples in the South of the Philippines. And when I moved to Canada, like uh, reflections of like Filipino culture were here were alien to me and felt very like romanticized and was like very alienating and isolating. So that just like, for me, like, I don't know. It's just like, even within like, even within, cause that this is my experience, like even within Filipino culture here, like it's hard because like, we're like a people of thousands of islands. And um, when you come here, there's like this weird taking from different indigenous peoples in the Philippines and making it this exotic funky thing removing kind of the history and then the oppression out of context. So, so that flattening thing is particularly hurtful and harmful. Um, one of the most funky, awesome, exotic things that gets presented in Filipino presentations here is the Muslim Filipino dance. And um, without really, and, and we never ever really talk about, it's called the Sinkil, but we never really talk about the fact that like, Muslim Filipinos have been oppressed for 400 years and you know so but like you like you take our lands back home but then you come like when we come here when you talk about Philippines you use our culture like so I don't know so for me personally like why is there no more thing I don't know like to what end is there to what end do we feed into that flattening of that Asian is the more we invest in that identity do we all just go very specific and then like flood everyone's like consciousness with all of our specific specificities and our histories and really celebrate how different we are as opposed to investing in this like monolithic kind of identity that was like put on us, you know, that's being used like for me, like the model minority myth exists because the Asian identity exists. And that's like, that's like my question, right? Like what? Why do we, in, to what end do we invest in the Asian identity? That's it, that's it for me. <laughs> Thank you, Alia. Amazing. Um, we're gonna move on to a question slash comment since we're running out of time. Uh, Rebecca, if you like to turn on your video so you can ask your question or say your comments. Uh, so I won't be able to put on my video just because no my video quality on my laptop sucks. No worries. Um, but I, I kind of just had maybe a comment. Um, I've been kind of just like reflecting on like watching the videos that I watched, listening to everyone in their panel piece. And like I was thinking about myself, like what I think of that word model minority and what I would take out of it, what I would maybe write or create with that. And then I think ironically, what struck me the most is like, um I don't see I don't see that in me like that word model minority just because I feel like I live such a I guess this is the best way to say it this functional life and it's been so chaotic that it's so far from what you would call perfect it's so far from what you would say is something to be modeled after so like thinking about that it's to me I feel like it's very ironic and it's like yeah, no, that's that's not who I am. Um, and then like another comment I had was, um, it's also really refreshing to kind of like hear, like see the pieces and also hear the panel talk because um, 
personally myself, I've been having like a lot of struggle just thinking about what I want to do with my life, what I want to do with my career. And I was thinking like, maybe I should write for myself, but then I felt like that wasn't enough. And hearing uh, the different panel speakers saying like, it's not about just me, it's about us, it's about the community, really kind of holds in so much more for me now. And it's really forcing me to think of things in a different way. It's not very, it's not a question. It was just more of a comment or like observation. I just want to say. Thank you, Rebecca. I don't know if anybody, any of our artists wants, want to respond to Rebecca's thoughts and observations, but we really Can I appreciate say something, that. Lisa? Yes, of course, go for it. Oh, here. Hi. I just wanted to speak to that that idea of like not being perfect and like feeling that chaotic life and that's something that I felt a lot in in responding to to the video that I got to Amanda's video like I think there's something um there's something really troubling and rage inducing about the model minority myth that actually perpetuates um, a lot of mental health challenges in Asian communities. Like, I think it's something like, at least in the US, Asian American communities are three times less likely than other racial communities to seek help when they're experiencing mental health challenges. Um, and that's, yeah, that's, that's what makes me really angry about the model minority myth, um, is that it actually just squeezes vitality out of our community. Thanks, Allison. All right, we have two more uh, folks in our queue. And I realize it's 10 o'clock and we've said that our stop time is 10. So if any of our attendees and artists need to head out right now, that that's more than okay. But we got two more. So if you do want to stick around, um, feel free to hang out with us. Um, so Leslie, you had a comment slash question. Hi, hi everyone. I'm I'm also gonna keep my video up because like Angela, I don't have yes. like pants on really. But anyway, um, just to say thanks everyone so much for your like vulnerability and sharing. And I've been sitting on this on the my computer for three hours, like listening to all of you, like pretty riveted and pretty relieved and feeling very um, yeah, no pants club, feeling very um yeah, like relieved, I guess is the word. And I guess the the depth of, you know, analysis and conversation that everyone's having about this, I just wanted to offer this podcast that I cling to called Time to Say Goodbye um, by three. Um, it really, um, I think it was Kevin who was, you know, and I mean, everyone's sort of really dissecting this idea of what what you know, even the word Asian means, which is like kind of not saying anything, but they do a great job of sort of really dissecting the sort of usefulness of this word Asian American, and um, especially in the earlier episodes. But it's um, it's two journalists who are Korean American and one Chinese Canadian academic, or sorry, Chinese American academic, and um, I feel like this group would really appreciate uh, the depth of conversation and just sort of the um you know they talk about uh, like every every topic they don't just talk about it but it, about being asian american but they take every topic every political topic through the lens and it's just such a relief to hear um anyway so i just wanted to offer that and thank you again everyone thank you leslie All right, and our last question is from Kay. Feel free if you don't have pants on, keep your video off. <laughs> I can I can put my video on. Yeah, thanks for um, tonight, and thanks for letting me sneak a last question in. 
um yeah i think this week i've been feeling pretty disconnected so like watching this video and watching all these made me feel really just connected again to just even humanity and i think it was really good for me um i think that was a comment um my my question sort of personal i remember samantha's video and how at the end you were saying like it's um i'm not docile i'm not quiet and i'm not small and and i feel like sometimes i i encompass those sort of that sort of identity like i i feel like i am quiet i am docile and i am small um and i feel um sort of stuck on sometimes um confused about like is this who i really am or is it who i was raised to be or is this who i want to be and then earlier in the discussion um someone was talking about reclamation and reclaiming that identity so i'm just wondering if um any of you uh if you wanted to speak to either like artistic experiences or personal experiences around reclaiming identity also sort of um speaking to uh rebecca's last point about sort of how there was also um so that that being stuck in that model minority being a trap because because even now there is like you can't even be small or quiet yourself. It's you have to be that within that trap. So yeah, I, I guess my question is, has anyone grappled with that like artistically or something? Yeah, I'll maybe I'll say something and I see Amanda will say something next. I I really like it it took me a while to say those words out loud that I was like, I'm not small, I'm not docile. Like, I don't wanna be these things, but I think that's me. Like, it took me a while to figure out that that's kind of like, although I did stray from like a normal model minority path growing up, like my parents wanted me to become, I don't know, something. My brother is a tech God who makes so much money and like is very like he's our only hope of getting rich like there's so much like I don't know I was raised to be very perfect and very like I wasn't like I wasn't the most smart student but I could have become like something really really just kind of like stereotypical and I think it took me a while to like I don't know just like break out for myself and I'm still like trying to find the words I'm so I think it's okay to always like it's I don't know how people do it but like I think this year like 2020 I figured out that like I don't want to be so silent anymore I want to like be able to talk about things I love whatever they may be even if it's like money or cooking or like anything that I love I just want to like do it and I don't want to like care so much about what other people do and I I don't know you have to find it for yourself and I think everyone just has to figure it out like it's so like Asian people can also be quiet right like I don't know it's I it's hard to say I don't know if it's like politically correct like anyone can be like whoever they want to be and that's such a weird like cliche bullshit that's like yeah everyone can like be whatever they want to be but it's like it's hard to it's so challenging as like an Asian person that like be like is the only reason I'm doing this because the media tells me that like I need to, in order for me to make it as like a talented Asian actress, I have to be loud. I have to break out of the mold. I have to like, I have to look like Blackpink. I have to be super edgy. Like you can also be that stereotypical, I don't know, the more classic, I don't know, appearance. You can, you, I don't know, it's, it's hard. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't answer this question, but people break out in their own different ways. And for me, I found it in just the activities that I loved, I clung to and I, grounded myself in the few things that I know make me like really happy and then I just like continued following those things I don't know if this answers your question but yeah I'm, I'm bringing along Amanda and Richard as well um and I just wanted to highlight that you've seen some artists tonight that talk about speaking from a place of quietness and solitude and you know different kinds of power that exist in all the different um 
shades, shades, pieces of who who make up us. You know, I think so. Success is defined by what you want, and the honesty to kind of go. That's where I want to be. This is how I want to define myself. And whether it's loud or quiet, I think. I think if you're honest with that, then you can find no greater comfort in life. I'm going to pass it to Athena. Thanks, Richard. And sorry, I'm just like on the move. So that's why I'm masked up. Um, I was just going to say, I feel that totally. And I think so much of it too, is like being comfortable with like failing at finding who you are. Like, I think on a daily basis, I am at one point loud or super outgoing. And then the next time I'm like quiet and I'm shy and maybe it's hard for other people to know who exactly I am. But I think what's helped me is accepting that that's, I'm allowed to shift and ebb and flow in who I am, that I can be a multitude of things. And even when I can, when I come home and I think about it, I'm like, man, I was so quiet during that dinner and maybe I shouldn't have been that way. Or so I didn't share my opinion in that rehearsal room. I think that just, uh, catapults me further that the next time I'm in that room, I get to be more true with myself. And if in that moment I'm loud and that director is not used to me being loud, well, that sounds like his problem, not mine. So being able to champion that I can be who I want to be in this moment, that it doesn't need to be the next moment I'm going to be that either, or the next day that you can continuously change. And what Samantha was saying, like, the love that like following our passion and following our love, I think that brings us closer to our truth and brings us closer to being able to find where we're the most comfortable, find what walking that line is and find where we get to challenge ourselves or not challenge ourselves because who cares, it's our own life. But yeah, thank you. Thank you. Amanda, you, you had a hand up earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say I can really, really relate to that, Kay. Like I was a very, very shy kid growing up and I feel like I'm in like a constant state of identity crisis, which I think I addressed in my video a little bit because I'm so trying to be what other people want me to be that I'm like, I don't even know which parts are me and which parts aren't anymore. But something that I realized recently through talking with my mother, um, which has been bringing me comfort was I think that my softness is something that I value a lot about myself. I don't want it to go away. And I also think that my grandma on my mom's side, like my mom often talks about how she didn't get the chance to be soft. Like that wasn't an option for her as a new immigrant. She like very much had to be tough, had to be like in control all the time. So I've been kind of considering my softness as like a gift, like I'm allowed to do it because of my mom and my grandma. So like holding that has been making me feel a lot more confident in like being my soft self. Yeah, thanks mom. I love your tender heart too. End of thought. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. Uh, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, Kay, I just wanted to say thank you for sharing in that. Um, I also echo being, I think, a really quiet and introverted and rather slower paced person at thinking through thoughts and expressing loudness. I just wanted to answer a bit on the reclamation in that part of the reclamation, I can speak personally in terms of reclaiming the definitions of loudness and reclaiming the definitions of what being loud as an Asian or being quiet as an Asian even means to me. I found that I'm just not very eloquent when I speak and I trip over my words easily. Um, so I write and I find that I can be very loud in my writing. Or when I cook, my flavors are gigantic and super spicy all the time, which is not healthy. But I found that in reclaiming the parts of myself that I can redefine what loudness was, that let me understand and come to peace a little bit of how sometimes the world tells me what being loud is and how that may be good or bad or, um, but I know that for you, you will know in your heart what you're loud at and what the mischief is in all of that joy and quiet and loudness. But thank you for sharing. Thank you, Jeff. Crystal, did you have anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I think I toggle with this identity crisis sometimes too, with, between like having to find a lot of uh, voice 
and like reclaim, you know, I am also a tiny person and I am doing a lot of um, intense labor sometimes. And I'm like often represented as the head of like a, a large, huge, beefy crew and it's like a little bit embarrassing that, you know I look the way I do and so I sometimes like find myself in these spaces and laugh to myself and and then I'm actually quite proud at like what my frame is and like what I can accomplish in this like uh, representation of softness but you know on on the interior maybe I'm a little bit more hard and vice versa I think it kind of like toggles between the two I take on a lot of weight in in my job for other people and when I come home I like have the privilege of having a partner who takes care of me like I'm very grateful for that and I'm grateful for the opportunity to to spend that time in the softness and very similar to what Jeff was saying in in being loud in other ways like I I also want to um, acknowledge that I think a lot of us uh, you know who, who've come to watch supermodel who've been a part of supermodel um who are you know kind of reflecting on on what it means to them in many ways uh there's also this like uh like a revolution that's kind of being sparked through this right like we feel that we have a platform we've said our th our thing and we're going to keep saying our thing and we've been empowered to say the thing and we want to keep doing it but that's a lot of pressure too and it's it doesn't necessarily have to be um, speaking things or, or doing art, I think, you know, we can be loud in our own ways, just to <laughs> say the same thing that Jeff just said. But I like always appreciate that validation of like, maybe being less soft in my actions or being loud in, in other ways of doing other things that's not my primary identity. Um, so yeah, I, I think I wanted to give permission of like toggling between the two and not like being a monolith in, in one or the other. And yeah, and then continuing to do so. <laughs> End of that. Thanks, Crystal. Kimmy, if you wanted to add anything. Hi, ASMR time. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to talk about uh, the, the theme that's going on here and the topic of reclaiming your voice and um, what it is and what's authentic and true to us. The theme seems to be that, and what I've learned this year is um, how dehumanizing the monolith is the model minority myth because all these things we're saying everyone that has spoken out right now uh, whether it be I want to be quiet because of this or I want to be loud because of this we have dehumanized ourselves because if it were anyone else they wouldn't they, someone that grew up with privilege they wouldn't say that makes me a bad white person or a good white person we keep saying it as if it's good and bad because the the monolith has is just so deeply rooted in our coming to the Western world. That's all we know. So uh, I can't remember who it was now. I'm trying to look at the chat. Someone said, "It just feels ironic because I'm not part of that." But it is because you feel uh, like you saying that you feel like you're f failing in a way and everything's chaotic. It's because uh, the the you know our, the white supremacy has gotten to us telling us that that's not human. But anyone else in that state who's allowed to feel and who's allowed to fail and is who's allowed to have this chaotic life, they aren't called a bad human or a bad Asian. So to us, that's already inherently in us that that's like, oh, I'm not being a good this or a good that. Um, whether, I mean, we all have different stories, every single one of us. But it's in there somewhere, and reclaiming voice, I've learned, um, I don't know if this helps at all, is just, was that a human reaction from me? Was that authentic to me? Not because I'm Asian. So if I'm in a role, if I'm acting or doing whatever, it's just in the world, rehearsal, whatever it is, even here. Um, I know that I'm always very aware um, out of this very destructive um, thought process uh, I'm always like thinking about my Asianness and if that's part of my Asianness rather than my humanness. So that's how I've been trying to reclaim and we feel safe here. So we're creating here because we all feel safe together in our oppression, whatever level that oppression is. And when it comes to talking about like flooding the system and flooding the arts, I think we do need to do that now because we've learned again through the monolith to be quiet. 
and that's a good Asian to be quiet. So I think that's also part of the reclaiming is like not to be loud to be loud, to be loud because you must. And that's how I feel right now is that I must because I want to, not to be a certain Asian. That's all. Love Thank you, Kimmy. Alia, I saw you turn your video on. Would you like to respond or no? Oh, um, I guess I just have a life hack to share. Sure. Uh, my life hack is called the Tita Collective. So a lot of folks know the Tita Collective as a multidisciplinary theater group, but really we started as a sisterhood. We're a, we're a group of women who, who helped each other get through something really tough. And uh, so we were a support system first. Um, not all of us, when we got out of that, we realized how disempowered we were in that space and we found power in each other as a group because we're quiet like you know we seem loud and rambunctious because we're a comedy group but I think individually we're all quiet and we give each other space to be quiet but like but we we, we are empowered because we feel like we protect each other so we started creating together and presenting together because um we're married <laughs> We're essentially married. We're invested in each other's well-being and wealth, you know? So if you're coming into a space, you're quiet doesn't mean, you know what I mean? Like you come into this space as you are. And we start every single meeting. We open every space to checking in how we're feeling. And we check out um, with like reflections on how we're feeling or if we're feeling good or bad. Um, and, and we have a message thread. <laughs> so you never feel alone or scared. Um, we often feel like the underdog, but we never feel alone because there's like a thread of women I have connections to. So for me, that was my life hack. And that's how, and it's funny because it's through them that I felt like I could start creating. And then I started doing things on my own and slowly, like they were like, they're like the incubator. <laughs> Right. And then um, I like I have a lot of social anxiety. So this is stressing me out right now. Um, but like, but yeah, that's my life hack. I think it's like um, someone said, like, why don't we do more of this? And I think like to add, like do more of this with each other because we've already shared such a vulnerable space together. And how do we get into like a relation, a building of relational kind of collaborations? Because then we start to get to know each other better. And that builds, it doesn't go away. I think Toronto has a culture of creating pilot projects and not necessarily like longevity in projects and collaboration. And I think that's if, you know, if we're like investing in this space together, it'd be really cool because the more I get to know you, the more I know what your vulnerabilities are and what you need from me. And, you know, and, and that, that for me was really important as an artist. So that's my life hack. Find the Tita Collective. <laughs> Thanks, Alia. And thank you so much, Kay, for your question and your comments. Really appreciate it. And thank you. Wow, that was so unexpected. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Um, all right, I'm going to invite uh, Wallace, Tanisha, and Samantha just to see us out because it's 1023. And uh, we, we should send our audience home in a proper... Uh... This is Athena's coming back in. Athena's ready to yeah. party. Forget <laughs> about it. Yeah, any final thoughts from like the, the team who kind of helped birth this? Want to do it again. <laughs> I want to keep on doing the thing because that's what we should do. <laughs> so that's really it. And again, the gratitude out the wazoo my god i think so inspiring like truly you're all very inspiring people and you're so eloquent everyone you're so good at speaking <laughs> like wow i have learned so much in these few hours that like gosh i'm just so i'm so moved i'm very grateful thank you all right folks that's it atanasha do you have any final yeah. Final thoughts? yeah. Um, well, this is, this is the 
biggest project, the most kind of epic thing that uh, Cahoots has done since Lisa and I have been here. And we knew that we knew that we wanted to do it and we knew that I knew that I wanted to do it soon. I, I originally had Supermodel uh, scheduled as part of next season and, and I don't know what what the tug was, what the urgency was for me. I think a, a large part of it was what a lot of uh, East Asians have faced in the last couple of years. But I just felt like the time was was now that I wanted to do it this summer. And I'm very, very grateful for everybody that was on board to do something in the middle of August. Um, thank you. Your work is is so resonant. It is so beautiful. I, I hope that people spend the next year going to YouTube over and over and over again, revisiting, being re-inspired, reaffirmed by all of this. And um, I'm, I'm really deeply, deeply grateful and to all of you. And, and with regards to something that was mentioned earlier about, you know, how, how do you do more of this that uh, still allows for the breadth of difference and variation within groups. These things have to be continued and led by very conscious people who understand that the monolith is a product of white supremacy. It is, it's a perpetuation of an inability to see complexity, of an inability to see the nuances of humanity so it's like, we'll just say the Asians, the black people, the this, the that, because the all of us, the loudness, the softness, the everything is not, um, is not affirmed by people who see us as less than human. So they make us all this monolith. And then it's a self perpetuating thing because we have to be a monolith at times to fight back. We can't, we can't fragment sometimes because we have to fight back. And so we become the Asians, the Jews, the Blacks, the Indigenous, when there is so much within that. But white supremacy at times asks us to diminish our own complexity in order to fight them. And that is brutal and it's wrong. And it, uh, and it shouldn't be a position that any of us are put in. Anyway, um, thank you very much. Much love to everybody. I'm so, I'm very, very moved by this. And uh, thank you, Wallace. Thank you, Nassim. Thank you, Sam. My God, thank you, Sam. Um, and Lisa Alves, I, I wouldn't want to be doing this ride with anybody else. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. And so much love to everybody. Take care, everyone.